Genesis 47. It's all a setup because God is taking you to a whole new level of existence, y'all. But you won't see it. He doesn't want you to see it until the appointed time. Now listen to what happened with Joseph. This, this describes what happened with him and his family once God said, it's time. Now he's elevated. He's got his own family, got his own kids. He's established. He's heading, I mean, he's working side by side with Pharaoh. And now his family, they finally know who he is. They reconcile. Forgiveness is a miraculous blessing. If you can forgive, who knows what kind of things can happen for you in your life? Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening? Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land, make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Remesis, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families and there was no bread in all the land for the famine was very sore so that the land of egypt and all the land of canaan fainted by reason of the famine listen 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 no matter how hard things get no matter how dark things get don't you know god knows how to supply for you don't you know god knows how to prepare you Don't you know God knows how to position you? He can set up divine appointments. When they went to get food, they didn't know they were going to their own brother. But his dream was fulfilled. They had to bow to him because he was the top banana in authority dealing with the famine and providing food. See what I mean? God knows what he's doing. Whatever they did to work against him, God used him, the one they worked against, to bless them, protect them, provide for them, feed them. Better learn to reconcile your differences. You never know who's going to be the one God uses. All right, moving right along. They, and yes, they apologized to him. Yes, they repented with tears, bitter tears. And he forgave them with bitter tears after he messed with their minds umpteen times. All right. Now, verse 14. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, And who knows if our money's going to fail. All the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. Now, I'm not going to read any further here because the bottom line is that his family lived fat off the land. In the middle of a famine, a bitter famine. Isn't that something? They live fat off the land. What was the common denominator for their condition compared to everyone else? G-O-D. God. 
See, some of you want to get out there and you want to gamble, you want to play this, you want to you want to play the numbers, you want to play the lotto, you want to try all these little business schemes and all these little clever little ways to get your little bucks in your pocket and you think you're going to get over on the stock exchange and all these different things. But you know what, baby, when the nitty gritty hits the fan, your total supply comes from God. Uh... God and God alone. Remember that. He's the one on the throne, y'all. Not the government, not Uncle Sam, not president, not governor, not mayor, not Congress. God is on the throne. And if you're in the secret place of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, you're covered. Your needs are met. But my question to you is, who are you reaching out for to meet your needs? Who are you crying out to? As the little chicks in the nest, calling on mama to feed them. That's the way we should be calling on God. You see, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. And when God gets through getting us through the dirt, through the hurts, through the tears, through the painful years, guess what? When it's time for promotion, we're going to be grinning from ear to ear. You talking about the Chester Cat grin? Oh, he ain't got nothing on the joy we're going to feel. Mm-hmm. We can be right in the middle of a famine, right in the middle of a crisis, right in the middle of a of a um, an economical blast. I mean, a total crash. We can be in the middle of hell itself on earth, and we will live like we're getting a preview of heaven. Why? A whole new world. A new fantastic point of view. See, when you're way up here and you're above the enemy, like the song says, it's crystal clear. You can see things from a whole new vantage point because you're not in it. You're above it because God has raised you up. And when God promotes you, your perspective changes. And you realize what's down there is small compared to what's up here with me. Hmm. So what's your perspective telling you right now? What kind of a mind game is it playing on you? Mm -hmm. Now I want to share with you who God is. Joshua chapter 1. Go with me to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 says, and this is what happens in our lives. We don't realize there comes sometimes a higher anointing, a, a stronger spiritual move in our lives right after a very painful moment, a major change in our lives where we feel lost, abandoned, wayward. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what to do. We're pulling our hair out at the roots. We're bound with worry. We're fretting, 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 fretting. Where do I go? What do I do? Who's going to help me? What do I do now? Oh, no. And God says, chapter one, verse one. Now, after the death of Moses, yeah, death plays a real role in our lives when it comes to pain, doesn't it? After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now arise, go over this Jordan, thou, and all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness, whoo, oh my God, I'm feeling this right now. From the wilderness, 
and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. 